So I did a video on the second channel going over the strange situation that the PlayStation 4 has found itself in eight years after it released back in 2013. And that is that they're actually still valuable. Like the price on the PS4 has not dropped as much as you would expect in like the secondhand market, despite being so old. And now it's to the point where we have uh, a lot of advancements in the homebrew community with the jailbreaking being released to the public that it's actually kind of worth even getting one now or pulling one out of the closet to hook up to play around with as those advancements are made or if you're unable to get a PS5, play some of the brand new Sony titles. This is a PS4 Pro that I let Evan use for a while now and it's actually the one that I put liquid metal on. So I thought it'd be a lot of fun to open it up, see what the liquid metal did to it after a couple of years and then fix it up a bit, put it back together. Guys, if you enjoyed these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. So Evan used this PS4 somewhat. I mean, he's a PC gamer first and foremost. So he only really used it for, I think like one specific game that he really wanted to play. And it must've been a really good game if it got Evan to plug the PS4 in. Uh, and it's actually still in there. And that is Spider-Man. Go figure there, right? But he said the PS4 Pro didn't really ever have any issues as he was playing through uh, that game. And he said he also checked out a few on the PlayStation Network itself. And that's after a couple of years of liquid metal being installed. So now we're gonna take it apart and see exactly what happened inside. Also, it's doing the checking system storage status. I figure since I'm probably going to be jailbreaking this and just playing around with some of the stuff that MVG has been telling me about, I'm gonna install an SSD inside of it. The PS4 Pro is interesting because it actually included SATA 3, whereas the original PS4 just used SATA 2 and was kind of bottlenecked for something like a, like a Samsung 860 Evo. Figured I might as well change that out and set it up here while we're at it. But there we have it, it works fine. He's playing in Samurai Showdown, Final Fantasy VII Remake, and Spider-Man. So there you go, the PlayStation was even able to pull in a PC gamer. Now this PS4 Pro was pretty much designated as like an experiment, almost junk system for the most part. It is still missing some screws and and even I think the cover for the hard drive, but I mean, I gotta give it credit, it, it does still work. It was pretty funny to do the liquid metal project and there were a few others I did that the videos didn't actually get released. Uh, different experiments when it came to temperature testing and others. Uh, the funny part with the liquid metal is Sony actually did put liquid metal in the PS5, so we were just a couple of years too early with that idea. And obviously the reason for doing things like liquid metal in some of these systems like the PS4 Pro, like the Xbox One X, is to make it so that the fan doesn't ramp up as much. It did an all right job, I would say, with the PS4 Pro. However, Sony pretty much admitted that it went beyond just the thermal compound in the system, and it was mostly a mechanical issue or a system hardware level in general. And that was one of the reasons they changed things up with the PlayStation 5. And we see some pretty good results from it so far, at least in the system's first year. One of the reasons I like the PS4 Pro in general working on it is it's actually not too bad to get apart. There's the panel on the bottom here, a couple screws holding that in. And then you kind of go around as I am and you start taking these silver screws out. We have ribbon cables all over the place, but for the most part, they line up pretty well when you put the board down. Anyway, when the metal shielding is off, they did have kind of this large plate and that's directly uh, behind the APU itself, which was just there to help support it since there's also memory right around it. Helps to cool and also keep the board flat in an area that's gonna be really stressed heavily. The reason I'm curious about the liquid metal is because it's been known that it can shift around inside and even cause damage to uh, some of the heat sink metals. And if it's not designed for liquid metal, like we see Sony doing with the PS5, you can have some uh, interesting side effects, we'll say inside. Anyway, with all of those smaller Phillips head screws out, we can see all the pads around here, making contact with all of these memory modules, just another way to kind of passively cool it. Remember, it'll go to this metal plate, and then also it'll kind of give off heat to this one um, as well. But we do have a large bracket here, just four Phillips head screws, and this will pop off, allowing us to get the board free. There's also this cable under here for the fan. I generally, you take off the other side to make that a bit easier, but I just wanted to go through as quick as possible. It was stuck there pretty well, and look at that. 
There's our liquid metal, and you know what? That actually went on and has stayed there pretty well. Like, it doesn't appear like it moved around too much. I mean, it doesn't look like it moved anywhere, really, and I had used some, uh, I think it was some, what, some lacquer at the time just to sort of make a barrier around with these components. That was the most concerning part, was that if I use too much liquid metal, it could flow onto this, and because it's conductive, would actually do damage to this chip. Check this out though, it, it kinda feels like the liquid metal is pretty dry and it's just like caked on there completely. So I'm gonna have to do my best to clean this off with some rubbing alcohol, because otherwise it, it's pretty stuck. I'm also noticing on the opposite side, it, it looks like it's, uh, it's got some pretty good, pretty good discoloration here. And it also looks like it's stuck there. Basically, it looks like it's just hardened almost completely on both sides. So I was able to get a good bit of the liquid metal off of the die itself on the chip. The issue is the liquid metal basically dried out and almost fused to the top of it. Like, I was able to scrape a lot of it off with like a plastic spudger. Basically something soft and not like a piece of metal should work to at least chip away at a lot of it and then using some rubbing alcohol or something to get most of the rest of it off. But I am to the point where I can at least see the dye. And in that case, I should be able to use something like MX4 compound or just something to, to fill in the air gap between that and the heat sink itself. So yeah, technically if you leave liquid metal inside of a system for multiple years, you're gonna get it dried out to where it is very, very hard and will pretty much just be nearly fused to not only the chip itself, but the heat sink. This is something else I'm working to get off and would probably get to a point where someone may have to actually like sand away at it. I didn't use a ton of liquid metal, which is the one good thing I guess here. So just be able to kind of scrape it away has at least given me the results that I need to then use compound to fill it in. You also want to be careful of this chip because as you are scraping away at it, you are then sending shards of metal essentially from that dried out liquid metal onto the board and you just want to make sure you're seeing that happen so you can brush it off completely. I am just going to put normal compound on here. I have some MX4 uh, to just kind of drop on here when I, when I close it up. And thinking about Sony's PS5 now, it does make me wonder a little bit about that liquid metal, although I have to imagine Sony did their homework with it and did quite a bit of testing to make sure that over time it won't destroy like, like the chip and the heat sink, basically like fusing it together or making it very difficult to take back apart. Um, it would be very strange that Sony would have just jumped into it without doing that. So while this application on the PS4 Pro that was not designed for liquid metal in the first place is a bit concerning, I, I'm not ready necessarily to take that concern to the PS5, at least yet. I mean, I mean we'll find out in like, two or three years, I guess, how that liquid metal from the initial batch turned out, and I'm sure I'll be doing a teardown then too. So you can see it's still discolored here, but it is pretty flat with everything I've done to, to kind of get it back down to this surface point. That's what you'll see from liquid metal is it will also discolor certain uh, heat sinks and metals and all of that. Also, if you need to get to your fan, this top part just pops off here, and there's the fan. Pretty easy to clean. You can just take like a, Technically a vacuum to it or some compressed air. Need to go a bit further. Uh, we do have screws back here for where the power supply pops out and you can actually get to the other side, which actually looks pretty good. So shout out to Evan for keeping the PS4 Pro pretty clean. And while it's hard to argue with what Sony was able to come up with here in 2016 for this PS4 Pro, I do wonder what they could have had if maybe they were able to do the kind of cooling that the Xbox One X did a year later even though that system was $100 more, I mean, the PS4 Pro, I'm basically accepting at this point, not using liquid metal or what, that it's gonna be loud. Like, unfortunately, that's just kind of the way it is. And a lot of that has to do with the cooling solution that they have here. Mark Cerny's pretty much admitted that. So, unfortunately, what could have been here with what's otherwise a pretty ambitious system for its time. And technically, the PS4 Pro is still gonna be relevant into 2022, six years later, because Sony has said, yeah, we're putting pretty much all those first party titles you've seen like, like God of War, like Horizon, like Gran Turismo on the PS4. And well, the PS4 Pro is the best PS4 you're gonna be picking up. So it's interesting to see that this still has some life in it 
despite it being a platform that's been out for eight years now. All right, so PS4 now back together with MX4 compound and most of the liquid metal scraped off. And I think what we're gonna do is change out the hard drive for the Samsung 850 Evo SSD. I don't expect massive changes in terms of stock performance, although there have been some tests that were run kind of benchmarking it versus even the original PS4 with SATA 2 with an SSD. And it is much different in terms of load times or uh, bring, having a character switch or fast traveling. That is all affected by a fair margin. Like it, it's a pretty good 30 to 40% change in some games. So while I'm mostly doing this because I'm expecting to play around with the homebrew scene on this PS4 Pro, I mean, Technically, if you get a higher end SSD and you're using some of these newer titles from Sony, you should see some performance gain this year. And the good news is it's even easier than changing out the NVMe drive in the PlayStation 5. There's a little door on the back. This entire sled pops out. And at that time, it's just four Phillips head screws and that's kind of it. Be careful that you don't strip these screws or the screw that takes the entire sled out. That tends to happen. Just kind of take your time and get, and get a get a Phillips head driver you can get a really good grip on. So that way you get that that nice first kind of kind of turn to break it loose. Don't stress too much if it's not initially turning. Just kind of give it a good push and turn and it should break free. Also note the orientation that you're dropping this in. It's technically from what you're looking at upside down. So you want to make sure that's also lined up there. Otherwise it won't slide back in correctly. It'll sort of get stuck. Anyway, that comes out there. This drops in and he's got to line it up because the SSD is going to be generally a little thinner than the stock drive they have in. So the new drive's in, system's on. Unfortunately, it comes up to the screen that's like plug in a USB storage device that contains an update file for reinstallation of version 7.02 or later. So in this case, I'm going to want to grab the Firmware, I think uh, before nine, nine or before. I don't want to go too higher than that in terms of doing all this homebrew stuff that MVG is talking about. So I'm going to see if I can find this firmware and install it. You know what always annoyed me about the PS4 Pro itself, like the shape? I guess it's kind of for the PS4 as well, is if your USB drive had like, I don't know, some size to it, it wouldn't quite fit all the way in when you go to push it into one of the USB slots. Like in this case, I have to use this USB extender so it so it fits in that slot. I've went ahead and dropped the initialization file on here. It's like a gigabyte in size for update 9.0, which should still work with any of the homebrew uh, jailbreaking stuff. Uh, but this will basically set it back to out of the box settings, a clean install on that SSD. All right, and there we are. The PS4 Pro is all set up now. Fresh install on that SSD. And the fan's not too bad. I mean, I, I haven't popped the game in or anything yet, but for the most part, it's going to be as you'd expect from a PlayStation 4 when you're playing in game to where it's like trying to take off and it gets really, really loud. But either way, I'm set up pretty well to play around with some of the homebrew stuff and the jailbreak scene that's really starting to take off now. And I think it's gonna continue to accelerate throughout 2022. So excited to dive in there and take a look, but let me know what you guys think about this down below. The effects of the liquid metal after a couple of years does that have you concerned at all about the PS5 or do you think that Sony has it all figured out on their end from the factory? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.